In this video, we are going to look at how to configure your application context, that is how to put objects into the application context of your application. In our last tutorials, we saw the component annotation and the REST controller annotation, which are used for annotating classes, objects of which we want to be put in the application context. The application context is built when our application starts or when the application context is refreshed programmatically. And at that point of time, our code is searched by Spring and all our classes which are annotated with these kind of annotations are instantiated, objects of them are instantiated and put into the application context. And for that to happen, in our application class, we have to have this component scan annotation. This tells Spring to search for all the classes in this package and in all sub packages for having the annotations like component, REST controller, controller, repository and service. All these annotations which are like component annotation are used for indicating spring that objects of the classes in which these annotations are used have to be created and put into the application context. Please note that I am not covering some advanced things which you may not be needing immediately. Uh, for example, uh, the component scan can take a base packages and there could be many things I am not covering here because this is a rapid learning course and those are best to look at in the reference manual rather than covering everything in a video course. But let me just repeat one thing. As we had seen in the last video, unless you want the name of an object to be uh, the class name in camel case, you can give a name here like this as a default parameter to all these annotations. These annotations are useful for classes that we have coded like mock mail sender and SMTP mail sender. But what to do if we want to use some third party library, the classes of which we have not coded and so we cannot annotate those classes with these annotations. For those, there are a couple of methods and one of them is to use the Java configuration classes. Instead of annotating the classes with component and all those annotations that we saw, we can also create a Java configuration class. And let me show you how to do that. I am going to remove the component annotations from the mock mail center and the SMTP mail center classes. And I'm going to create a Java configuration class. Let me name that as mail config. I will annotate that class with the configuration annotation. And in this class, I will need to write methods annotating them with bean. returning the objects that I want to go into the application context. So this code will create a new object of type mock mail sender and put that into our application context because it is annotated with being and the name of that object will be the name of the method here. So we need to code another method that would be for the SMTP mail sender. This will be SMTP 
mail sender. So to repeat, this Java configuration class should put two objects into the application context, one named mock mail sender and another named SMTP mail sender. Let us see if this works. Let's open a browser and visit our application. And now let's go and see the log. Yeah, it is working. So this was a basic example of Java configuration. And in the next tutorial, we are going to look at some more details of Java configuration. Apart from Java configuration, and the annotation based configuration that we saw earlier like the component annotation we also can configure a spring application using xml configuration i am not going to cover that in this rapid tutorial but there are example of material on that available in the internet and there are video also available for that and people nowadays do not prefer XML configuration over Java configuration and the annotation based configuration as I understand.